beauties and welcome to our last video in the court card series. We are going to be discussing the kings today, the most masculine element of the tarot court. Uh, I guess masculinity in its fullest, most balanced expression would be a good way to put it. Um, this is a video that I have been putting off for a little bit because I've been struggling with how to broadly define the kings as far as uh, traits that travel across the board. For some reason, it was harder for me um, to reduce this down than it was for the queens or the pages or the knights. And I think I've been able to come up with something that makes sense across the board and something that you can hold on to as you're learning tarot, as you're continuing your study of tarot, as you're looking into different decks and uh, different meanings and all of that goodness. So. The two key words I'm going to choose to describe the kings are as follows. <laughs> we have action, very, very broad, very general, but I think very apt. Action and leadership, okay? So I'm going to choose the King of Wands to discuss first because this has been a bit of a stalker card in my life. It continues to come up in the multiple decks uh, that I have in its multiple incarnations. So this is a card I've been reading a lot about and thinking a lot about. So we're just gonna launch off with this card. So here we have the King of Wands in the Rider Waite Smith and we have the Father of Wands in the Wild Unknown. Now, this card basically typifies someone who seeks leadership, who wants to stand out of the group or offer their services of leadership when things become muddled or confused or no one really knows where to turn. This is not necessarily someone who is, you know, sword brandishing, like leading the way. This is somebody who, when you're in a group, will naturally step up and take the leadership position when it's needed. This individual is incredibly charismatic, um, is highly attractive in their energies. They are charmers and they're really able to win people over with the way that they present themselves. And they're also, uh, they have a tendency to just launch into projects. They have this endless, boundless creativity. Uh, and that's an active principle, an active creativity, uh, something that wants to be made, that wants to be manifested and brought into this world. And I imagine um, a figure like this is having really this kind of boundless energy, this highly vibrating energy. This is not somebody who is going to spend an entire day, um, you know, relaxing, chilling out, reading a book. This is someone who needs to be going, who needs to be doing, who needs to be seeing and creating and making. This is fire of fire. This is a, a very, very passionate kind of an energy. And as far as action is concerned, constantly moving, constantly thinking, constantly creating, uh, constantly forming new friendships. Um, this, is, this is a bit of a um, transitory energy. I think it's important to note. Uh, this is not necessarily something that's going to stay or last for a very long time. The interests that the King of Wands may have may wane. And when they tackle a project, when they lose passion for it, they may set it aside. So there may be some trouble as far as following through is concerned, but because there's always this course and current of uh, energy constantly flowing through them, they're able to, um, you know, make their way in this world. There's always something that they always have more to give in terms of creation, in terms of making, in terms of doing. So because they're never really static, uh, they're always able to manage and maintain their life on their terms. This is a very independent person. This is somebody that doesn't necessarily need, uh, you know, the support uh, or the nurturing of others. They need the attention of others, I'd say. It would make some sense, um, but they don't necessarily need to be supported by others. They do their own thing. And this is this is a person who, you know, if you are, uh, if you're seeing or dating this person, uh, they may turn on a dime on you. And I'm just thinking of somebody that I believe embodies this characteristic perfectly that I knew when I lived in Scotland, he was with someone at the time and he made this decision, like they came over together. He made this decision to move to France and build like, and do carpentry and build houses. He like just dropped out of school and just did his own thing. And my poor friend was like, you know, supportive, but at the same time, she's like, what the fuck? That is what the wand, the King of Wands um, has the capacity to do. You know, he's not necessarily considerate in ways that other kings of the court may be, um, but things will never be boring. 
with this uh, <laughs> with a person who exemplifies the traits of the King of Wands. All right, next I want to talk about King and Father of Pentacles. This is a very different energy from the King of Wands. This is an energy that's much more stable, uh, that's much more devoted to family and community, uh, that's much more devoted to a sense of responsibility and nurturance and taking care. So here we have the King of Pentacles on the right from the Rider Waite Smith, and then the Father of Pentacles from the Wild Unknown. This is a very uh, this is a leader in terms of leading um, leading the pack, leading the family. Um, think of it almost as a, a gentle patriarch. Uh, someone who, you know, puts food on the table. Someone who provides. Very much a provider. Um, but someone who also really knows how to enjoy the simple pleasures of life. Unlike the King of Wands, they're not necessarily going, um, you know, after all. Uh, the newest the newest craze or their newest idea they're not following this just boundless trajectory into the future they're more so appreciating what it is that they have and cultivating a very strong home a very strong home base environment and are um, very nurturing in that aspect this character or this you know this archetype when embodied in a person is a very good friend to have they're very loyal um, and they lead in gentleness and they lead by example I'd say they're not necessarily gonna you know uh, run to the front of the run to the front of the pack and say this way they are going to live a very solid stable and admirable life and others venerate them for that and that's the way in which they're a leader they lead by example um, they don't necessarily seek to be in power uh, but they're just really highly respected for their um, you know their high moral standard and their just general sense of goodness. And when it comes to action, because this person is very much a provider, I connect this to the action of work, working with the hands of hard work and diligence and, you know, not necessarily a boundless creativity, but like, like a steady stream. Um, this reliable, this person you can count, a person you can count on to show up for you. Um, to show up in terms of the work that's needed to share the load. Uh, so that's the energy we're working with um, ac action-wise and leadership-wise with the King of Pentacles. All right, next I want to chat about the King of Cups slash Father of Cups. And here we see, let me do this to make it more standard. Here we see on the right the King of Cups from the Rider Waite Smith and then the Father of Cups from the Wild Unknown Tarot. This figure in the court is um, water of fire. So there's an equal balance of the fem feminine element and the masculine element. This is someone who is incredibly compassionate, incredibly caring, um, an empath, if you will, an empath who has figured out a way to, um, to shield themselves, has figured out how to feel for and with others without letting that take them down. They're very strong in their own identification, in their own identity, but they're also able to really make space for others and guide others and help others. Since the kings are more active rather than receptive, this is someone who's really good to go to when you need um, not just guidance, but you need practical advice, practical help uh, when it comes to, you know, matters of the heart or emotions. Uh, someone who can really be there and support you when you're going through something, but can also shine a light on where you could potentially need to go next um, in that sense. They're much a physical guide rather than a space holder in terms of your path. This is someone who just emanates a sense of love, a sense of kindness, when in its highest expression. Um, they can lead by example, just like the Pentacles, the King of Pentacles, in that they are a teacher of how to, you know, moderate the emotions and, um, I don't want to say control necessarily, you know, but but control their expression of their emotions in a way that benefits their relationships rather than uh, hinders their relationships. 
in uh, a lower expression, this is someone who can be very volatile and insecure. Um, but that's, that's really what occurs when the conditions of life are causing stress. And perhaps I'll do another video on, you know, the highest expression of the court cards versus the low ex lowest expression and like what that really means and how that looks in terms of like applying it to actual personalities or um, expressions of uh, mood and personality. We'll see. Um, but generally, this is someone that, you know, you can you can rely on to give you a big hug to comfort you and to give you uh, good advice on how to proceed and to um, demonstrate a sense of balance in the emotions that makes it possible for you to to like take it from a 10 and bring it down to a four, if you know what I mean, <laughs> emotional expression wise. So that's how I like to think of the king or the father of cups. And last but not least, we're going to discuss the Father of Swords and the King of Swords. This is the most stoic energy of the kings, I'd say. Um, this is an energy that is, it's very tempered, very logical, very incisive. Once the king makes a decision, he's swift to act. This is this is very much airy. This is heady. This is driven by logic and analysis. Uh, a lot of times, you know, like desire and um, you know emotions don't necessarily come into decision making. This is like a strict, straight up practicality in order to get things done. This is someone who's really adept at getting their point across, at very clearly explaining what needs to be done. One but also executing that. And that's where action comes into play. Not only will this person, you know, lay out there the best way of proceeding, but they'll do what's necessary in order to take that plan and make it into a reality. This is someone who can sometimes be viewed as cold and calculating because they don't really allow too much emotion or too many other uh, influences to factor into their decision making and into their behavior, but they get the job done. They certainly do. Um, they really are a good leader to have if you're looking to make sure, if you're looking for broad sweeping swift kind of a change, something that happens really quickly, you know, if like shit has hit the fan and everything's a mess, a personality like the King of Swords is perfect to invite in and just clean up that mess, just tell you what needs to be done, you know, not trying to spare your feelings and not trying to sugarcoat it, but just trying to be real with you and um, getting the job done in a way that's efficient and that makes leaves a lasting impression, sometimes for the good, sometimes for the bad, um, but really does bring about change. So I want to thank you all very much for joining me on this journey through the court cards. I hope that some of the information that I've conveyed through these videos has been helpful to you. Um, if you are interested in viewing the other videos, I'm going to link them below. I have them. Uh, I have a video for each of the pages, the knights, the queens, and the kings. And I look forward, I think I might do that video I mentioned when we talk about court cards in their highest expression and court cards in their lowest expression, because I think that that could be really useful in terms of those who read with reversals or in terms of those who need or would like to have a broader idea or a broader view of what the court cards could potentially mean um, in a reading. So look forward to that. Uh, feel free to subscribe if you liked any of the content you see here. There's much more to come and I'm always open to suggestions. So if you have anything that you're interested in and you'd like to see, feel free to comment below and let me know what you'd like me to make a video on. And if it's something that jives with me, it's something that I feel like I, I know a little bit about and that I can speak to, I'll totally try to bump it up into the priority list so that you can have something that's useful to you. So I love you all very much. And until next time, I hope to see you soon.